Welcome to my latest video. This video is going to be a tutorial on how to assemble my Panzer III IV tracks. As you can see in front of you, I've got several versions of these Panzer III IV tracks available. These are the ones I designed from Panzer III Type II all the way up to Type VII and then the Ostketa and Winterketa, as well as several different variations. Just about every variation that you can think of here that you would need some of which are interchangeable, some of which are not, and that's just because of the geometry. Not so much the way that they're designed by me, but the way they were designed by the Germans. For example, Type 6A and 6B are certainly interchangeable, and they would be interchangeable with just about any of the other types as well, but Type 7 is not interchangeable with any of the others because it has a very different hinge pin layout. So that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to mix and match to have unique tracks on your vehicle. Winterketa and Ostketa are very popular varieties. These are about the same size in reality, but the Winterketa just has an extension off the side that makes them distribute the weight across the snow more evenly. The Ostketa was designed more for slicker environments and really muddy environments where it's the same width but there's additional hinge pins and traction in that location as well not just a weight distribution plate these are fiddly to assemble i'm not going to lie they are small these being larger make them a little bit easier to assemble but with the smaller tracks such as here i've got the panzer one and two var varieties and some shermans the smaller the tracks the harder they are to assemble because there's less to work with for you to hold on to, but also I have to make the pinholes smaller because to keep them to scale, I just can't make them as large as I can on say something like a Tiger One. Tiger One here you can see is almost twice the size as a Tiger Three track, which means the pin can be twice the size, which means I can use a lot bigger diameter pin than the wire that I have to send with the Type Threes, or sorry, Panzer Three, Panzer Fours. So keep that in mind. If you're not up to, for a bit of a challenge, then these probably aren't going to be for you. But if you've ever done fro model tracks or any workable tracks that I've ever worked with, you're going to probably be just fine with these because they're not that much different. You'll have some pinholes that you have to open up. You'll have to get them lined up properly, but I'll show you the easiest way that I've come up with to do all that. And as you can see, I assemble a lot of tracks. All right, what do you get? What comes in the package? Well, pretty straightforward. You get, depending upon the type of track you buy, but typically you get two baggies. One will be labeled the right side. One will be labeled the left side. Typically, the one with the left side is the one that I put a little coil of wire in that you can use for your links, for the pins to link them together. The reason I do them on sides like this, right and left, is simply because I put a cap on one side so that the pin doesn't slide all the way out and you don't actually see the wire on the outside of your model. The wire would be on the inside of the model if you see it at all. But when I put these together, I'll show you a way to make it to where the wires aren't visible in any way, shape or form. For my example here, I have five A's. So Panzer 3-4 type 5A, any options, middle stolen, gavel stolen, etc. And then the side that they go on. For these Panzer 3s and 4s, I have learned via the German book regarding Panzer Ketten by Dr. Schwartzman that the track handle, the term he uses, goes forward. On a lot of other tanks, that's the exact reverse. So I leave it to you to decide if I, leave, if I have them labeled correctly left or right. If you're modeling a vehicle that shows it on the other side, then by all means, flip around. That it won't matter with the assembly and it won't matter with it mounting on your vehicle. What matters is your reference and which way you want it to be moving forward. For example, some of the early Tigers, the crews got tired of having mirrored tracks so they would actually swap their left hand side with another crew's right hand side so that one crew had two left hand side tracks and one crew had two right hand side tracks. Eventually they made the Tigers, they issued them out with all the same track, no mirroring at all. Because of that pin, they're a little bit different for either side. You get the tracks and you get some wire to assemble them. All right, now, what do you need? 
in order to assemble these tracks? Well, obviously you need the tracks that you purchased. You need the spool of wire that I give you. I'm pulling mine off my source spool here, and I do find it helpful to get some of it out and straight. Some people like to cut them up into little pins. I prefer just working with the wire so that I don't have to fiddle with picking them up off the work surface or anything. You will also need some snips to snip your wires. Tweezers are somewhat optional, but extremely, extremely helpful. Pliers, I find that these flat pliers can be very helpful for flattening wire if I need to, but I, I rarely use these, but I will frequently use these needle nose pliers with the bend to assist in getting the wire seated all the way down. I like the bend because it's designed so that you can see what you're working on and not have the pliers in the way. You will also want a pin vise of some sort. And depending upon the tracks, you're going to want some small bits. I prefer for these Panzer 3 4s number 77 drill bits. These are very tiny. They will break. Make sure you have a few. You don't have to have them for the assembly, but it makes it a ton, ton easier. The other thing that I find as a must is magnification. Now, I like to use these in conjunction with this, which gets me very high powered magnification and allows me to see more clearly what I'm working on. Plus, I like the light factor of this guy. It makes it easier to see what I'm doing if I'm not at my well-lit work surface like I am here today. This segment of the video is going to be covering removal from the carrier medium, as well as the cleanup process. Removal is fairly simple, and this video specifically is to assemble the Panzer III fours. So removal can be different for different track links that you purchase from me. But for the Panzer III fours, I have found if I just grab the link down low with my pliers, wiggle it back and forth a little bit, then I can pluck them off like seeds out of a seed pod. Now, safety information here. Resin dust is very harmful, so if you're going to be creating dust, you want to make sure you're wearing a dust mask. The other thing that you want to be very careful of is, as you can see, sometimes these supports go popping off here. The supports become very, very brittle, and you want to make sure you're wearing adequate eye protection. For me, that's in the form of magnification. But for you, that may be safety glasses or whatever you are the most comfortable with. But you've been warned. All right, now that we've got these off of the carrier medium, we just need to go through and take off the little supports. Hopefully you can see those supports that are stuck on there. This is very easy to do. You can do so with your thumbnail. You can do so with your tweezers. Depending on how much time and effort you want to put into these, I'm working on this being a short tutorial video, but you can use a file or sand paper to sand these down and get rid of every trace of those tiny little nubs. Or you can leave them and call them casting marks, whatever you want to do. Keep in mind that tracks were one of the highest wear items on the vehicle. They were cast in mass. They were not always the most perfect things out there. And there would be tracks on a vehicle that had a broken guide horn or broken links. And they would run with them until they had an opportunity to stop and fix them. Or if they didn't have that opportunity until they threw the track. And that would result in the tank being abandoned. If it was in a combat situation, the crew needed to get out in a hurry. Resin, as I've said earlier, is brittle. So as you're doing the cleanup or as you're removing from the carrier medium, you may find that you break a link or so. With these Panzer III fours, you need approximately 100 per side. Again, check your references. And I send a informational page with my track links. And on there, I have the breakdown of what you need for each type of vehicle. But as you're working on these, I if you do break one or find one that's flawed, just set it aside. I send 150 of each side 
approximately, if they all turn out, you have 150 links per side of your vehicle. If they don't all turn out, you'll have slightly less, but you'll still have considerably more than the 100 that you need. As you can see here, as I've been talking to you, I'm just working through these. And at this point, I'm cleaning up the last one of the test bit that I snapped off there. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen tracks that I snapped off. Do a quick cleanup of our area. And now we're on to the next phase, verifying the holes and making sure they're clear. Okay. Now, this phase is perhaps the most important phase, and this is where I start using my extreme magnification. So I apologize, but I'm guaranteed to put my headset into the camera frame at some point. I promise I will do so, I always do. So what I do here is I start out by taking one of the links and feeding the type or the number 77 drill bit down through the track handle side that's the side with the traction when I get it to where I want it I reopen my pin vise and I seat the drill bit down so that I won't go too far through I don't want to drill out the entire path I don't want to drill out the pin cap on the other side that makes it look like there's actually a pin in there under extreme magnification and I don't want to push too hard that I break this part of the link. It is very brittle. You could break it with not much force at all. And then I check the other side as well. So this one here, now bear in mind I'm using a number 77 bit. That is the extent of what would slide through these holes. So this one had a little bit of resistance in it, but the, pin, the hinge holes, pin holes, were actually open from the get-go. I just had to feed them through. I do that with each and every link that I pull off. And I, of course, work in batches just so that I don't do all of one step at one time. I find I get bored doing that. I also usually put on an audiobook as I'm doing this. I am a huge fan of Audible, or I will have a movie going in the background, whatever. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that process as well. And you can get through a nice, good book as you're working on some of these. That last one was all the way clear. This one is on this side. It may look like I'm drilling them out, but I promise you, I'm just ensuring that they're open. Now, I say that and I jinxed myself. This one here, the middle guide horn on the back of the link was solid. So I did have to drill it out, but both the other sides were hollow. So it made it easy to line it up properly. If you find one that you have to drill out or that none of the holes are open, just set it aside. Like I said before, you've got 150 and you only need roughly 100. So you'll have plenty. This one here, the third pin hole was not open. What causes that is sometimes the resin doesn't cure or does, it'll cure in the hole or it won't drain properly. You know, there's several factors that can lead into that. If I don't, I try to blow out the holes before I put these into the final curing stage. I also wash them in two different alcohol baths so that they come to you as a very clean product. But that said, it's not a perfect process and 3D printing is still far from a mainstream technology. It has come a long ways, obviously. That middle one also was not clear. And I will speed this up at this point so that you're not sitting here getting bored as I go through these 13.
All right, that was the last one. Now I've got 13 with the pinholes cleared out. All right, time for the assembly. So we've got our trusty snips. Don't use your god hands or your super sharp Tamias for this. The wire will destroy them. Got our pliers, got our pin vise, and our tweezers should we need them. Probably won't need the tweezers unless we need to do some additional cleanup. You'll notice I snapped off and prepped 13 links here. I do that because I want to try to have a group here to show you of 10 to 13 links and I anticipate that I'm going to break one or two or have one that's not quite formed properly, doesn't want to line up, whatever, and I have to pull it back out. So I always do a few extra. Then I would put these together and then I would leave a longer section of wire. That'll make more sense to you here in a little bit. So that if I needed to, I could... Uh, uh, well, so that as I keep building the track, I build it out in sections of 10 at a time till I get it to the length that I want and I'm always able to pull it apart at different joints if I need to, to do any repairs, painting, weathering, customization of any kind, whatever. Now, for full disclosure, I am not wearing my extreme magnification because I can't see and keep this on camera well enough at the same time. So I might have more issues here today than normal or than you would if you had extreme magnification at your disposal. So here, I just put the pins together or the track links together, holding them, pinching them in my hands. I want to pinch them firmly, but not too firmly that I snap the link because remember, these are very, very brittle and they will just break on us. Once I have those and I have them lined up the right direction, I take my pin vise and I start working it through the holes in the hinges. I print these in a translucent resin so that I can see the drill bit or the wire working its way through and I'll know when I'm all the way at the end or when I'm properly lined up or if I'm having problems and going off course and then this too is why I set that drill bit at the depth that I want so that when I get it all the way in I don't keep going I don't push too hard and break things and I don't drill out the back side where I've got my cosmetic cap so at this point I'm all the way in these links are together and I pinch them again firmly beneath the guide horn and gently and carefully pull my pin vise out now we've already verified all these holes were open so we're not drilling the holes out we're just using the pin vise to line them up now I slide my wire in there and I push it on down. If I'm ever not sure if it got all the way in because I can't see it there, I'm holding it. I take my pliers and just push a little bit. I can also grab at the edge, pull out, and see that I had that much wire down in there, which in turn is the width of the track. And I should be able to just slide that wire right back down in there, which I did. Now, here, rather than cut it, right up against the track link, I cut an extra quarter of an inch. And then I fold that over to get it out of my way. I do that because like I said, if I happen to break one of these, I might need to pull that back off. And if I cut that wire down snug, then I won't be able to do so. So now I grab my next link and I put it in line as well. And here's another trick that I wanna show you. On the first one, it doesn't matter which order you go in because it's the first two. But on this guy, I try not to go with the track handle of the last one. Because if I push too far, I break the one that is already attached on my chain. If I flip direction, however, and put it to where I'm working on the handle of the one that I'm mounting at this point in time, hopefully I'm explaining this well enough, then if I happen to break one, I break the one that I'm trying to mount right now, not the one that's already on the chain. So here I line these up again, and again, I'm not using my normal level of magnification, so I'm not able to see as well as I would like or am accustomed to. And with a little bit of force and a spinning action and pinching the posts on the links together to make the hinge, I slowly gently and methodically 
spin my pin vise and insert the drill bit. Now pinch beneath the guide horn once again. Slowly and carefully pull out, remembering that that drill bit is super fragile and can easily break. If it breaks in there, I might have a pin, sure, but I won't be able to get it back out and I'll have to replace that drill bit. Slide the next one in. Make sure she's seated if you're not sure. Cut off a quarter inch, bend over. Bend the wire over. No joke intended there. Grab your next one. Line up the handle where you want it to be. Get the cat hair off your hands. Using your drill bit and pin vise. Carefully, methodically, feed it through. Carefully, methodically remove it. Insert our wire. Make sure she's seated. Yep, that one's not going all the way in right there. And I just noticed I broke that leg. Okay. Well, actually I didn't break that leg. I broke the link before it. So, as I said, pull that out. Pull that one off. Set it aside. Remember, you've got 50 more per side than you need. Approximately. And also remember, I'm used to having better magnification. So that is a good portion of why I'm moving as slow as I am. and why I broke that one. My eyes are not what they used to be, that is for sure. Slide it in, cut it a quarter inch long, bend it over, grab the next one, And you just, you'll end up getting a feel for it. You'll be listening to your movie, your audiobook, your TV show, whatever in the background. Next thing you know, you'll be done. And you'll be wondering, gee, why don't I buy another set of tracks and just assemble them for the heck of it? I'd appreciate that, by the way. All right, now you know why I'm not a comedian. For those of you keeping track, we're now on lane one, two, three, four, five, six.
if you are pushing and you start to get a kink in your wire, don't just keep pushing because you'll just end up wasting that part of the wire. And if you do find you got a kink like here, I just cut it a little bit extra long. There's no sense trying to force that kinked wire through. The wire for these is 30 gauge forest wire. I buy it at Michael's or from Amazon. You can also use 30 gauge jeweler's wire. I find that the forest wire is actually a little bit stiffer, so that's why I go with it. This one here, the one that I'm trying to attach is not lining up very well, so I'm just going to set it aside, call it a faulty link, grab a different one. Why would that happen? Maybe it just didn't form properly during the 3D printing process or something. It's a very interesting process. This resin cures with light. It's called UV resin. And it is hit by a light which has the areas that it doesn't want to cure masked by a LCD screen. So it's called MSLA printing. M is for masked. S L is for stereolithography. So sometimes it just doesn't mask properly. Sometimes there's a chunk of resin floating around. Sometimes it didn't cure properly. Sometimes I get bad batches of resin. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of things that could happen with the 3D printing process, which is why these things are not in everybody's home. Uh, the other reason is the liquid resin is actually quite dangerous, as is the fumes. So I wouldn't want it in a home that had young children. But I predict that someday 3D printing will be in every household just like a microwave is today. They're already getting plant-based resins. They're making much, much safer, lower odor. Someday we will all be 3D printing. Well, maybe not we all, but I predict you'll be, and it's already happening actually, you can buy games where you can buy the whole product or you can buy the files to print the game yourself and pay considerably less for it. So I predict that someday you will be able to buy the product you want and have it shipped to your house in three to five business days or sent directly to your printer. And there's lots of online 3D printing services. You could in fact consider me one of them. I just typically only print my own designs or designs that are along the same theme, such as tank brusher, design some tank tracks and upgrade pieces and I am one of his merchant supporters so I'm licensed to reprint his designs and I do that so that I can spend my time designing different things than he has done and offer both my designs and his designs to you all. My upcoming tiger tracks, two out of the three are his designs. My panther tracks, two out of the three are his designs. He also designed Ferdinand tracks, which will be hopefully getting listed soon. And he's working on a bunch of 38T and Hetzer upgrades, as well as some Tiger II tracks. And I know those Tiger IIs are gonna sell. I am always getting asked for Tiger I and Tiger II tracks. Out of my 13 links, this is my last one that I prepped. I broke one, and one was not properly formed. So 
So at 13 prepped, I was able to assemble 11. All right. 11 tracks assembled in 16 minutes. Just over a minute of link and you see how you just get faster and faster as you go. Now I'll show you the cleanup stages. All right, the next thing to do on these tracks, now that you've got your link assembled, and if you want to do more than 10 links, you certainly can. I mean, these here I do all 20 some that I need to wrap around the sprocket in one go without any interruption. But what you can do, what I recommend you do, is now we need to clean up these bends that we did because we've got this link and I'm going to assume that we're going to attach it to the rest of the chain. What I do is I grab my snips, grab that wire, pull it out just a smidge and then snip it. And then I just nudge it back in with my snips. snips have become magnetized because of the way that I store them. There we go. That one didn't want to cut so it ended up going farther out than I want. Now that we're to this stage, I once again take my pin vise and I just gently push that pin all the way back down to make sure it's seated at the bottom and out of sight, out of mind. Now this stage is certainly optional because those pins, if you mount the tracks properly, will be on the inside of your kit and you'll never see them so there we have it we've got our assembled tracks now the last thing i want to show you is i've got my 3b here and my previous 3b link set i'm just going to come in here and i'm going to pretend like i'm attaching this to this link to form my full chain for my kit I'm going to feed down my pin vise just like before. I'm going to grab my wire just like before. Slide it down in there. Just like before. The only thing I'm going to do different is instead of cutting this one a quarter inch long, I'm going to cut it an inch and quarter or so long and then fold it over. This way, I continue building out my track links and if I get to a point where I need to take it apart for any reason or to test fit or wrap around I have a means to grab it and pull it apart otherwise I can just snip that off like I did the others and continue on with it now I'm going to come back after a couple minutes after I have done some prep work on some Ostketa and just show you them just because they're a little bit different due to their link size
All right, you just saw me snap off five Osketa and clean them up. Now I'm going to validate the pinholes are open. This one here, the middle guide horn is not. Osketa take a little bit more work to get open if they're not on the middle guide horn because they're based off of type seven, so they're longer middle guide horns. Here's what I wanted to show you specifically. Osketa has a longer hinge point. So as you're doing these, this is where you're going to need to extend out your drill bit. So I extend it out. Get it to where I want it to be, like that. And then I slide it in so that I can't go too far, just like on the previous track links. And now I can use that same drill bit and pin vise to make sure that they're all open. So now the assembly is just about the same because they are after all type three or Panzer three, four tracks, but you've got two more guide pins, actually three more guide pins that you have to line up. So they can be a little bit more difficult to get the drill bit fed all the way down through. But on the flip side, I actually find that they can also at the same time be a little bit easier because there's more to hold on to. There's considerably more out here on this part than on the previous. But aside from the length, we do them the same exact way. And once again, try to work with the link that you're working with the handle as your newly attached link so that if you make a mistake and happen to break it, you hopefully only have to dismantle that one link that you're assembling. Make sure I'm firmly seated, I am. It is easier if you have, like I was saying before, a decent amount of wire to work with. I let that get a little bit too short on me. Lengthen it back out. That is all the way in there. All right. So in probably about five minutes, we've got five Osketa. 
Again, if you're not wanting to have that kind of time investment, then you should probably just use the rubber band tracks or the link on link tracks that come with it. I'm not saying that these are going to save you much time. I'm saying that they have a lot higher detail and that they will like make your model look a lot cooler and that they have a great deg degree of flexibility and I find them fun but they're certainly not going to be for everybody and no hard feelings if they're not for you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching through this. Like or subscribe if you feel the need to and I will be uploading more tutorials for assembling my tracks and my bits and pieces here soon. Thanks and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and a very Merry Christmas.